Hello and welcome. Today we are looking at Edexcel IGCSE Computer Science Paper 1 Principles of Computer Science and we're going to take a look at question 3. Question 3. Isra works in an office building where she has access to different types of network. Isra uses different types of networks for different tasks. 1. Name the type of network she uses to print a document on the printer in the office next door. Now, as you know, there are three types of networks we could choose for the answer for this question. We've got a personal area network, a PAN, we've got a local area network, a LAN, and we've got a wide area network, a WAN. The most appropriate type of network for this is a local area network. And that is because a local area network is suitable for the same building. She is next door to the print room, so we're just using a local area network, which you'll have in the building there. Question A2. Name the type of network she uses to order stationery from an online supplier. Now, this means online supplier means a website, a website that sells stationery, and the most appropriate network for that is a wide area network. So when we think of a website, we think of the internet, we think of a wide area. So the answer for number two is wide area network. Identify the measurement used for network speeds. Is it A, megabits per second? it be megapixels per second, C, mebicycles per second, or D, mebihertz per second? The answer is network speeds are measured in megabits per second. So the answer for that is A. 3C. Isra uses her tablet computer and smartphone to access email. She wants to set up a new email account. State the email protocol she should use. Now, she's talking about the tablet computer and the smartphone. There's two protocols for emails. There's POP3 and there's IMAP. Now, the correct protocol here is IMAP. And the reason for that is because IMAP stores the message on the server. It does not, unlike POP3, which downloads the message from the server, it stores the message on the server so she can access it from her tablet, her smartphone, whatever device she wants to use, she can access her email from that server. So this question is a three marker. So you get one mark for the correct protocol, IMAP, and you get the extra two for the justification. Now the justification for IMAP is that because, because it's stored on the server, it's accessible from different devices and it doesn't need to use storage space on her smartphone. So I've typed in there, using the IMAP protocol means she doesn't have to use limited space on her smartphone. That's my justification for IMAP. A little bit more, another sentence to that, whereas using pump three means the messages would start taking up her smartphone storage space. 3D. The table describes the characteristics of different network topologies. Complete the table to match each characteristic to one network topology. And I've got four, because there's four in the specification, there's four network topologies. A topology is the shape of the network. It's how it's laid out. And we've got bus, ring, star, and mesh. They're the four topologies you need to learn for this exam. And I've got the characteristics there. And I need to complete the table for four marks. And I can only choose one network per characteristic. Although there may be some characteristics that could apply to a couple of networks here. To help answer this question, it's worth just going through some of the network types there, the topologies. So if we start with bus. The bus network topology is laid out like this. It's basically a long cable with the devices connected to it and you have a terminator at one end and you have different devices there you may or may not have a server they may just be connected to the network like that now data travels bidirectionally down the network but if i add more devices to this network if i increase the size of the network then it's going to slow things down and a problem with this type of network, if we look at it closely, is that we've got different devices there. But messages are easily intercepted. So if I 
send a message from the computer on the far left to the computer on the far left right, it could easily be intercepted along the way by any one of these messages. And adding more devices to this, increasing this bus, is going to slow it down further. So what type of network performance degrades as more devices are added? That is the bus. As I add more devices to the bus, performance is going to degrade. Next characteristic, all devices are directly connected to all. So back to the slide, if we look at the mesh topology there, we can see that we've got on, on this diagram, we've got six computers and every one of those six computers is connected to every other computer in that network, which is very different to a star network. Because we can see in the star network there, we have a central hub and the devices are connected to that hub. They're not connected to each other. So they're not directly connected to each other. They're only connected via a hub. But in the Nash network, we can see that we've got every single device connected to every other device. So the correct answer there is all devices are connected directly to each other. That is the mesh network. Next characteristic, each node has a physical attachment to a routing device. So let's take a look at this network, the star network. We can see the routing device in the center. Now that could be the hub or the switch, but each device is connected to it. So the answer to that question is that we can see in a star network, each node has a physical attachment to a routing device. And the last one here, there are no data collisions because packets travel in the same direction. If we look at the ring topology, in the ring topology, all the data travels in one direction, it's unidirectional. So the answer, the last answer is that in a ring network, there can be no data collisions because all packets travel in the same direction. And that is the final point there. So each one has got one cross in it, and that gains me four marks. Question 3E. Information sent across networks is represented in bit patterns. A bit pattern is like this one here, 11010001. That's a bit pattern. That's a pattern of bits there. So the bit pattern 11010001 uses sign and magnitude representation. Convert this pattern to a denary number. Now, um, with this question, you're looking at a positive or a negative number. And if 128, if that contains a zero, you've got a positive number. If it contains a one, you've got a negative number. So we know that this, because it says sign and magnitude representation, that this is going to be a negative number. Convert this bit pattern to a denary number. Now, you can see that here, I've already laid out my table, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. I suggest you do that in your exam like that. And I've already placed the bit pattern into the place values there. Now, I need to ignore that first bit, that 128, because that's going to mean I've got a negative number. It does not mean I add 128 to 64 to 32 to 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. I, I do not add those together. I ignore that first bit. And what I'm going to say is, I'm going to start with 64 plus 16, excuse me, 80, plus 1 gives me negative 81. So my answer is negative 81 because 128 contained 1. And this meant that I've got a negative number. Now, I've linked to some other videos where I've gone through binary decimal conversions. Let's go to question two. Convert the denary number 75 to an 8-bit binary. 
So for ease of use, I've already laid out my bit pattern there, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And what I need to do is go through each of those values there and place a 1 or a 0, depending on whether I need it. So do I need 128? 128 is far bigger, far greater than 75, so I don't need that. I'm going to place a 0 there. Do I need 64? Yes, absolutely. That goes into 75, so I need, I need that number. Okay, do I need 32? 32 plus 64 give me 96. That's far too much, so I'm going to place a zero there. Do I need 16? 16 plus 64 give me 80, and that's far too much, so I place a zero there. So that means I'm definitely going to need 8. 8 plus 64 gives me 72. Do I need the 4? That would give me 76, so I don't need that. And then I definitely need the 2 and the 1. So I'm going to place ones in those place values there and just line that up neatly like that. So 8-bit binary, the answer is 01001011. Because if I add all those ones up together, 1 plus 2 plus 8 plus 64 gives me 75. And as you know, we like to make things easy for the examiner. They've got hundreds and hundreds of these papers to mark. I've written out the bit pattern there. Okay, so the 8-bit binary, 01001011. I've written it out for the examiner to make it really, really clear that I've done that question. E3, the addition of these two 8-bit binary patterns generates an error condition. So you can see here, I've got two binary numbers added together and I've got the answer underneath and if we remember the rules and I've covered binary addition before I'll link to it I'll link to it above but remember that from the rules we can say zero plus zero is zero so if I add nothing to nothing I'm always going to get nothing zero plus one gives me one one plus zero is one and one plus one is one zero now if you remember one zero in binary into decimal is two one zero is two so it's like saying one plus one is two now so if we look through this one plus zero is one zero plus zero is zero etc all the way through now one plus one is one zero so the one would be carried across there so we'd say one because i'm carrying the one across there it'd be one plus one which is one zero so in actual fact, there would be an extra one there. And that is an overflow because it goes into nine bits. So the error condition here is that we end up with an overflow. The error condition is that we end up with an overflow. We go into nine bits as adding these two binary numbers gives us a number larger than 255. So if you remember 128, the next number is 256. We would go into the ninth column, which is 256. So it will be a number larger than 255. And that is the answer for two marks to that question.